this video, we're going to do some guided exam question practice on the question 15 that came up on the, our 2022 mock paper for junior science. Uh, this video was about the production of a common gas and the testing of that gas. And then there was a bit on data analysis and collection. So first of all, it says that question 15, it says some chemical reactions proceed quickly, while some proceed at a lower rate. During your studies, you investigated the effect of a number of variables on the rate of production of a common gas. Now notice the way that they have not asked you about the specific gas, and they're not gonna be able to ask you about a specific gas. And the reason for this is on the course, they don't mention that you have to learn how to do a specific gas. They just say it like this, a common gas. So many different teachers around the country will teach you how to produce a different gas. So you need to know how to produce the gas that you produced in class. Right, so in the first one, it says, first of all, to name a common gas that can be produced in the laboratory. Okay, so what I want you to do is pause the video and write down the name of the gas that you produced. All right, so show me right in if, you, if you've written down about the gas you produced. The gas that we produced in my class was the gas hydrogen. Now, if you didn't do one of these in class, if you didn't produce any gas at all, you can go ahead and learn about the one we produced. Hydrogen gas was the one that we learned to produce. So if you say that, and let's, like, especially the, the, the main ones that you might have done are hydrogen, oxygen, and carbon dioxide. If you did, and if you're writing any other gas like nitrogen or methane or something like that, it's probably wrong. Okay. But hydrogen is the one that we did. It then says to draw a labeled diagram. That's very important. So we have two, uh, uh, we have a, a action word here. It wants us to draw. And it says a label diagram. Now I'm telling you now, if you draw a fantastic diagram with no labels, you're going to lose a lot of marks. It says draw a label diagram of how this gas could be produced. So how you actually made this gas. And it says include labels for any equipment and chemicals used. So if you don't name your equipment, you don't name your chemicals, again, you're not going to get all the marks. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to give you a chance to pause the video and go ahead and draw the setup that you use to make this gas. Okay, so you should only be watching now if you have done this. Okay, so what we want to do is we should have drawn a label diagram. So to make, uh, to make hydrogen gas, what we had to do is we had to take a tube like this, the tube that we put liquids into in class, if you can, and you didn't draw this already, copy this down and tell me, can you label it, label this piece of equipment? Pause the video, do that now. Okay, what you should have done is label this test tube. This is a test tube. And in a test tube, we put an acid. It was a liquid, okay? And the acid was called hydrochloric acid. Now, the reason why we started with hydrochloric acid is because to produce hydrogen, we can mix together an acid plus a metal and this reaction will always produce a salt plus hydrogen gas. So our, my students learned about this chemical reaction in class and we used hydrochloric acid as our acid, chloric acid. And then we put a metal in. So here is a gray strip of metal. So I want you to draw that and if you can, Pause the video and tell me what the name of that metal was. So if you're in my class, you should notice that the name of this metal is called magnesium. So that lets us add this up here, hydrochloric acid plus magnesium, oops, plus magnesium, react to give us a salt, which we won't worry about the name for now, plus hydrogen. So we produced hydrogen. So what would we do in the diagram to show that hydrogen was produced? Well, hydrogen is a gas. And when we do a chemical reaction that produces a gas, we get this fizzing or bubbling. We get this bubbling reaction. So this is a gas that basically bubbles to the surface and starts to collect in the tube. So here we get hydrogen gas produced. And what we do is we put a stopper on the test tube in order to trap it. This is called a stopper. All right, so we've labeled all the equipment now. We've got a test tube here, that's labeled. We've got a stopper that's labeled, which is what it asks us to do, label any equipment and any chemicals used. So we have hydrochloric acid and we have magnesium. So for this, we will probably get all the marks. I think that this was what, 15 marks, I think, just off the top of my head, I don't fully remember, but I think it was what, 15 marks. So quite a lot of marks going for a good diagram there. 
It then says to explain how you tested this gas to confirm its identity. So how do we do a test to prove that the gas was hydrogen and also include the result of that test? So pause the video and see, can you write down about the test and the results? Okay, pause the video and write down about the test for hydrogen and the result of that test. Okay, well, just as an aside, we'll draw it for anyone who wasn't in my class. So here we have our test tube when we put it on its side and we've just collected all the hydrogen in here. Okay, so all the hydrogen is here. And what we do is we take a lit wooden match. So this here is a match. This is a match. We light the match on fire. So uh, orange, I don't see an orange color. So there's no orange, so I'm just gonna use a pink flame. Okay, this is a flame. Okay, so this is a match on fire. We bring it close to the test tube and we take the lid off. And as we take the lid off and we bring the lit match close, what we end up seeing is we end up see it, or we end up seeing a little flame, but more importantly, we hear a, what we call a squeaky pop sound. And this is the hydrogen burning really, really quickly. So the hydrogen burns with a squeaky pop. Okay, so this is often referred to as the squeaky pop test for hydrogen. You bring a lit match close, uh, you take the lid off and you burn the gas. So what is the test? Describe the test now. Okay, and you should have described it in words and now describe the result. What happens if, uh, what happens if the gas is hydrogen? Now, the unique thing about this is hydrogen is the only thing, only gas that will make this squeaky pop. If you try and burn carbon dioxide like this, it won't make a squeaky pop. If you try and burn oxygen, it won't make a squeaky pop. And this is why this is a unique test that helps us to identify hydrogen gas. So to describe the test, what I would say is uh, you burn, that's what we were doing, burn the gas with a lit match. That's all you do, bring a lit match close and you burn the gas. The result is hydrogen burns with a squeaky pop. That's how we identify that this is hydrogen gas, squeaky pop sound. All right, so that is all about how we produce hydrogen, how we test it. On to the next one. It says a student carried out an experiment to investigate the effect of temperature on the rate of a production of a certain gas. So it's not telling us what the gas is, but I don't think that's really important here. It says the first reaction happened at 20 degrees and the second one happened at 30 degrees. In both cases, the gas produced was passed through water as it was collected. This was to ensure that the gas was always at room temperature when its volume was measured. A lot of stuff there that doesn't really matter. It said the student recorded the following results. So here we've got time. And here we've got two sets of results, one for volume of gas at 20 degrees and another one for volume of gas at 30 degrees. It says in the space below, draw a graph for both sets of results. A key thing here, what have we got? We've got time. This is time in numbers, 0, 30, 60, 90, 120, etc. And we've got two sets of results for, uh, for the volume of gas. A reminder, when we have two numerical data sets, two numerical data sets, so this is sets of data with numbers, it's a trend graph we want to use. Trend graph. Too many, a few of my students drew bar charts. Why do we not want to use a bar chart? We only use a bar chart bar chart when we have one numerical set one numerical or number set num numerical plus one category set one category so this is like categories with words like red blue orange so how many cars in the car park were red how many were blue how many were orange then you've got categories blue orange red and then you've got numbers of cars seven four two that's when we want to use a bar chart. In this case, we've got volume of gas, numbers, and time. And then we've got a separate set of results, volume of gas, and time. Okay, so this is going to be a trend graph where we plot the points. And we're going to have two sets of results. So I'm going to do this one 
for 20 degrees in pink. And I'm going to do this one uh, for 30 degrees. I'm going to do it in green. And we should label that at the end. So the first one in pink, we're going to do this set of results. When time is zero, volume is zero. So let's go and plot that point. Time is here, right there in pink. When time is 30, volume is seven. Okay, so here time is 30. That's here. Volume is seven. So up to five, up two more, up to seven. Okay, so what I want you to do is get some graph paper. And now that I've started this line for you, I want you to finish the pink points on your graph paper. So you have to copy out the axis or else use the exam paper if you still have it and you can rub out if you did a bar chart. Uh, and we wanna plot all of these points in that in pink here. Pause the video and finish that now. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and finish it now. You should only be watching if you've done this, you have to have a go at it guys, otherwise we're not gonna make any progress. Uh, 60, the temperature is, the volume is 13. So 60 up, one, two, three, 17. So 90 up to, there's 15, 16, 17. There's the next point. 120, it's 19. So we'll go up from 120 up to 19. Now notice what I'm not doing. I see some people do this. They go, okay, I'm going to go to 150 and I'm going to go up to 20 and I'm going to stop here. I don't want to draw this line. Yes, I want to put my point up here, but I don't want that line to be there. Okay. Then what I'm going to do is this makes a nice curve. So using the freehand, no ruler, I'm going to, oh, just going to start. I'm going to go with that, rub that out. And I'm going to freehand curve a nice pink line through the points like that. What I'm then going to do is say pink line is 20 degrees C. I've labeled my line. I'm now going to get you guys to do the same for this line, time versus volume at 30 degrees, so the green points. So the first one, again, is zero, zero, it's there. The second one is, okay, I'm going to let you pause the video and take over from there, do that now. Okay, so what you should have done is when time is 30, volume of gas is 10. So time is 30, volume is 10. There's the first point, 60. Volume of gas is 60. 60 and 60 is there. 90 and it's 19. Just there. And then it's 20. And it's 20. So again, freehand curve, join up the green points like this. Oh. So I'm going to start that again. Don't like that curve. There we go. And then we're going to label the green one is 30 degrees C. All right, so we're on to the questions about that graph. Now that that there is what 18 marks, right? It's 18 out of the 45 marks going for that graph. Six going for the two labels, by the way, three each. Oh no, sorry, I think it was three going for the two labels. Uh, three out of the 18, and then um, the other 15 marks going for plotting the points in the correct places and joining up with a nice freehand curve. Okay, so on to the next, uh, on to the next thing is state two conclusions that you could have drawn from the results. So two bullet points that we could have drawn from the results. Pause the video and try and write down two conclusions. Okay, so to make conclusions, you've got to compare the two lines, okay? So again, think, uh, uh, compare them in terms of how quick they are, how steep they are. Okay, pause the video and do that now. Okay, so the graph for 30 degrees is steeper. This means, what does it mean, dot, dot, dot? What does that mean? Pause the video and finish that off. Well, it means that so the reaction is quicker at 30 degrees than at 20 degrees. Right, now compare them for the total volume of gas produced. Total volume. Well, the second conclusion is the total volume. So the finishing point, if you like, is the same. It doesn't matter what temperature it was. So the only thing that changes here is that the, uh, the, at 30 degrees, you get to the maximum volume more quickly. You could have said that the reaction is over quicker. That would be another conclusion. So at 30 degrees, the reaction finishes earlier because it gets to the maximum earlier on. It gets there after 120 seconds, whereas the other one only gets there after 150 seconds. 
So those are conclusions, two things you can get by comparing two graphs. And that was it, guys. That was that question, 45 marks. Uh, I explained to you in class that the two last questions are worth 45 marks each day, a good chunk of the exam. The last two questions by themselves on the paper are worth 25% of the whole thing. So it's really worth your time spending quite a bit of time on them and really trying your best with them last two questions. All right, guys, that's it. Uh, another bit of practice done. Um, uh, hopefully uh, you, you learned something from that video and especially knowing what type of chart. If you, if you keep getting those charts wrong, then maybe you need to take this down. Okay, how do we know which graph to do? So which graph? We've got a decision to make. If you've got two sets of number data, then your graph has to be a trend graph. If you've got one set of uh, numerical and one set of categories, then you do a bar chart. Okay, that's the, big, that's the big thing that you need to think about there. All right, guys, that's it. We'll see you in the next video.